Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So tomorrow is the first day of 2022, so I want to start off by wishing all of you a happy new year. And it's customary to sometimes make predictions as to uh, what's going to happen in the new year. And one question that I've been asked uh, on numerous occasions is, uh, when are there going to be treatments for limb girdle muscular dystrophy? Um, so at the end, I'm going to give my prediction for that. Uh, but first, I want to you know go over a few um, points you know that that weigh in on that. Um, first, it's important to remember that LGMD is not a single disease. It's about 30 different diseases, each of which is caused by mutations in a different gene. And most treatments are going to be for one or maybe a few different genetic subtypes. So the question, um, when is there going to be a treatment for LGMD? Uh, I don't know that that's going to happen for uh, every type of LGMD, you know, you know, with the same treatment. Um, there's a few approaches that have been tried, but um, really most of the stuff that's going on is focused on one or maybe a few different diseases. So I think what, you know, people really are asking is, when is there going to be a treatment um, for my particular type of LGMD uh, that's available to me in you know the the place where I live? And now that's a very complicated answer because it depends on uh, what subtype you have. Uh, not everyone actually knows what subtype they have, and I would argue that you know that would be a good New Year's resolution for everybody if you don't know what subtype to you know try and get genetic testing or um, you know work with um, you know expert researchers in genetics to um, you know if you've had a genetic test and the results aren't clear uh, to figure out you know exactly what um, type of muscular dystrophy you have um, you know, and then you know, um, you know, what treatment approaches that are, you know, in development now uh, might help you. Probably once a treatment is first developed, it's not going to be um, available everywhere in the world at the same time. Uh, but, you know, that's something I really can't predict because um, that's really, um, the decision of the companies that are developing drugs, um, you know, I don't have any insight into that. So since I'm a scientist, the first thing that scientists usually tend to do in answering a question is to um, define the terminology. So a lot of people, um, you know, will use the words um, treatment and cure interchangeably. Okay, so what do we mean by a treatment? What do we mean by a cure? So I would argue that a cure would be that, um, you know, something you would do that would, you know, completely solve the problem. Your muscles will be fine. It would, it would be like you've never had the disease in the first place. Now, all of the treatments that, you know, are being developed today um, unless they're given very early in the disease course, um, really aren't going to be able to do that, uh, as far as we know. And in fact, you know, in gene therapy trials, there already have been people who've been treated with gene therapy and who have been stabilized and in some cases, you know, had their muscle strength uh, go up. So, you know, do treatments exist? Well, I would say no, because those were only um, done in a clinical trial. They're not approved yet. They're not available, 
you know, for, you know, anyone to take unless they're in that clinical trial. So I'm going to define a treatment as something that has been approved by, you know, a regulatory agency such as the FDA in the U.S. or the European Medicines Agency in the EU or, you know, comparable uh, regulatory agencies in other countries specifically to treat um, limb girdle muscular dystrophy as opposed to some drug that's already approved that it's been found that um, it might yield some benefit, you know, uh, if people with LGMD take it, but isn't specifically approved for LGMD. So that's, go that's going to mean that, you know, one of the drugs that's currently in clinical trials, uh, you know, either, you know, the gene therapy for um, some of the sarcoglycans or the gene therapies that are about to start being tested uh, in LGMD2I slash R9, or uh, Ribitol, which is also a, uh, being tested in uh, 2I or R9, uh, are approved. And what that's going to mean is that um, the regulatory agency um, agrees that these are uh, reasonably safe, that um, in the clinical trial that it's been, you know, statistically proven that they benefit people uh, relative to the natural history of the disease. Uh, and in, in particular for the gene therapies, that um, the drugs are able to be manufactured, um, you know, in a, you know, consistent approved way in the quantities needed to um, treat the target population. So gene therapies are what's termed uh, biologics in um, drug development. And what that means is that rather than them being chemical compounds which are, you know, synthesized chemically, um, they're either, um, you know, proteins or viruses or genetic sequences which are produced in living cells. In uh, a clinical trial, you're going to um, treat, you know, maybe tens or at the most hundreds of patients, but uh, after the drug is approved, um, you're going to need to make enough to treat um, thousands of people. And scaling up the production from, you know, a, a small batch to a big batch um, isn't at all straightforward. Getting the approval for the final production process that's going to be used in manufacturing the commercially available treatment um, is a really big deal. So the other factor that comes into play as to when a treatment specific to LGMD will be approved is um, the length of the clinical trials. So generally, um, uh, people doing uh, clinical trials in muscular dystrophies, you know, are wanting to do a, you know, trial, you know, within one year, although, you know, really if you take a little bit longer, maybe two years, um, it's much easier to show um, efficacy of the treatment, you know, because if someone is um, not progressing at all over two years or even a little bit stronger, um, that's pretty much outside the normal course of the disease. So my guess, um, you know, based on, you know, where the, the current trials stand, is that, um, you know, there's likely to be the first uh, approved treatment for LGMD in 2024 or 2025. Um, now, that has several caveats. That means that uh, assuming, you know, nothing, you know, goes wrong in terms of the trials with safety and there's no major setbacks, um, and that um, the, tri the trial is 
able to um, show efficacy rather than you know being sort of unclear and something that the um, regulatory agencies uh, wouldn't um, wouldn't accept as evidence that the treatment is um, effective. So I think the the primary um, hurdles uh, for um, treatment approval to overcome are, you know, one, because uh, LGMDs are rare diseases, you know, finding the patients to enroll the trials, um, uh, understanding the outcome measures to be able to show that the treatment is effective. Um, you know, it's my belief based on the um, the results that have been released so far in uh, gene therapy for, for LGMDs uh, that they are effective. It's just a matter of proving it statistically um, and also um, working out the manufacturing processes for the drugs. And the other thing is that that needs to actually be done before the final trial is completed uh, because um, you know, the regulatory agencies want you to do the final uh, trial on which they're basing their approval with the actual drug that people are going to be taking. So for those of us living with limb girdle muscular dystrophies, a treatment can never come fast enough. So uh, two or three years, you know, does seem like uh, a lot longer than we might want, but I think we are getting close and hopefully we'll have a lot of uh, exciting results from uh, clinical trials to talk about in 2022 and uh, wishing all of you a happy new year.